Hey guys, it's Erin or Gimme Yang. Let's try this. Hey guys, it's Erin or Gimme Yarn 418, and this is Thank God It's Finished or TGIF. Um, today is March 28th, Wednesday. I am a couple days late recording this. No real good reason. Last Friday, I had a bunch of things that just needed to be done, and I couldn't squeeze it in and I had planned on doing it on over the weekend and we had a bit of an incident over the weekend because it's us and nothing ever goes um, smoothly shall we say um, so let me tell you about that and then I'll show you all the knitting because there's a lot of knitting um, Kristen went to spend some time with her father on Saturday which totally support awesome and I stayed home with the dogs and I was doing some housework and knitting and all of a sudden I heard mm, mm, mm. almost like your phone is on the table and it's vibrating so I muted the TV because I was watching a movie and to make sure I wasn't hearing things and it kept on happening and I realized it was the furnace and the furnace was like galloping and I was like, well, that's not good. So I jumped up and I turned the thermostat down to zero and I hit the emergency switch. I opened the door to the basement. Well, I did that when I turned off the emergency switch and it smelled, um, I smelled burning. Not like regular furnace, but I smelled like fire. Um, but I was comfortable enough that nothing was going to happen and I didn't see any flames or smoke or anything. I did look around, but I didn't stay down there. And I called Kristen and I said, I hate to do this, but you need to come home. I said, there's something going on with the furnace and I don't know anything about furnaces. So I explained to her what was going on and she said, okay, I'll be right home. It takes about a half an hour to get home, um, you know, with getting her stuff together. Her parents don't live far away, but far, not far away is not close. Um, by, you know, not far away in Vermont standards is not the same as close in other places. Anyway, she had to pack up, you know. Anyway, I'm rambling. She came home, and I thought I was, like, totally overreacting and that it was just going to be, the, oh, we're fine. Let's just turn, the furnace can go back on. Well, she went downstairs. We found some soot marks on the, the cement floor, and there was a burn hole in the side of the exhaust piping. And we decided we weren't turning the furnace on, and we called the furnace repair guy, our, our furnace, the guy who takes care of our furnace, um, to schedule him to come first thing on Monday. Because thankfully it wasn't, like, negative anything outside. Um, it was about 30, 30 to 35 during the day and about, I don't know, 10 to 20 overnight, probably 10 to 15. It was cold overnight. We have a we have two oil fill heaters and we have a fire a wood burning fireplace so we knew we weren't gonna freeze. Our biggest concern was keeping the house warm, keeping Dewey warm because he's so small, and the pipes not freezing. So we took turns sleeping and tending the fire and making sure that the house didn't get too cold until um, the furnace guy could come on Monday morning at eight o'clock. Now, in the interim. Several people had said, oh, that's a test hole, which, yes, it was a test hole. However, it was charred on the outside. Um, we didn't know it was a test hole when we turned it off because we had never seen it before, um, but it shouldn't have been burnt all around the outside. So, furnace man came. He was here for about two and a half, three hours on Monday. We were quite fearful that we were going to have to get a whole new furnace, which we do need to get a new, well, we don't, our furnace is completely fine. It's not as energy efficient as it could be, but our furnace is fine. It's in great shape. So he came and he cleaned out the furnace. We were overdue to be cleaned, um, which is our bad. Um, adulting is hard. <laughs> so he cleaned out the furnace. He changed a few filters. He had to change something that came from the actual oil tank in the basement. He had to 
do something with the motor and he changed all the exhaust pipes and did I say he cleaned it yeah he cleaned it so he did all of that and the furnace is running beautifully now he said that it was a good thing that we turned the furnace off because the furnace was not getting the oil the way it should have been and one carbon monoxide which we have carbon monoxide detectors but I would hate to find out that we have carbon monoxide in the house by one of those going off um so carbon monoxide we would have burned out the motor and it could have it, it could have kind of kind of fire exploded I don't know what happens I think furnaces explode when when there's something wrong but thankfully number one I was home number two the dogs weren't home alone number three we caught it and number four it was a it was a it was an expensive fix in that there were a lot of things that had to be fixed but it was not a new furnace not a new house so I didn't get to record on Saturday or Sunday because we were trying not to freeze Monday because the furnace guy was here and yesterday I couldn't record because I had to go and do all the things that I put off while we were dealing with the furnace that's just life it's how it goes but I'm here now. My house is warm. I have a t-shirt on, which was unheard of. Our house, I th we kept it, or we were able to keep the temperature in the house between 60 and 65, which is good. We sleep with it at 64, so. Um, however, when he was working on the furnace, we stopped the fire and we ch unplugged the oil fill heaters. Um, it got cold. <laughs> it got really cold. <laughs> So, that, that's, that's my short story long about why I'm late. You guys understand how it goes, though. So, what have I been working on? I've been working on a lot while all of this has been going on and before it was going on. The first thing I did was some sewing for myself, and it's kind of a fail. It's kind of a success. I'm not, I, I haven't quite decided. I made myself this bag. Which, from there, it looks very lovely, other than the lint that's on it. Um, I love the fabric. And the outside is great. It's when I got to the inside. It, it's a hot mess on the inside. I'm not even going to show you. Because um, when I carry this bag, because I will carry this bag, I love it. Nobody's going to see the inside of the bag. No one's going to know. Isn't that fabric awesome? Um, yeah. This is a, one of those, this is one of the fabrics that I get custom printed. Well, it's from the same company. I've never sold it in the shop. Well, I just got it, so of course I haven't sold it in the shop. I would not be opposed to purchasing this fabric if anybody wanted a bag and a sell. Um, you can just message me on Etsy if, if you're interested in that. I won't be making this bag again because I did not enjoy um the second half of making this bag. I enjoyed the first half very much. Um, I learned a whole lot of stuff, so that makes it a win. But it's not its not a complete success story. Usable bag, cute bag. I'm the only one who's ever gonna know, well, other than you, because I've told you all, that it is um, a hot mess on the inside. So, that was my first thing that I made. And that's all the sewing I've done. I'm waiting for some fabric to come in for an order for some bags and next to the knitting um I had showed you this yarn last week I think I had started this um Malabrigo sock and this colorway is the African violets colorway and this is some old yarn because it's from um, my old LYS, which has been closed for almost two years, I believe. This is what the yarn looks like. And I was knitting the Clara dress. Now, I adore this pattern. And I would knit it again. I would knit it again. I love it. I just love it. I've been itching to knit one. But I forgot how to do something, so I looked through the helpful projects. People are bashing this pattern like there's no tomorrow, but I love it. I didn't make any changes to it. I didn't knit it exactly as the pattern called for, and I knit the six-month size, and here it is. It's really beautiful. 
I love it out of this Malabrigo sock. The last one I knit I did out of Malabrigo sock also. Um, I don't have any more Malabrigo sock currently, but I would like to knit another one, so I might just pull a different like solid or semi-solid fingering weight yarn and knit it. And this is for our friend who is about to have her first grandbaby in May. So, and it's a girl. I was going to knit something gender neutral because I didn't know if they were finding out what it was, but it's a girl, so yay! Okay, and then I went um, stuffed animal, stuffy toy crazy. I showed you last week, this, or the last video, this Chelsea the Chatterbox. It's a pay for pattern on Ravelry by Jenna, Jenna, by Jenna. I can't think of her last name. I think it's Jenna, I don't know. Anyway, it's on all of these projects that are linked on Ravelry. So I knit her. She is my favorite monster pattern. I have myself one, two, three. This one is going in the mail. So this is the fourth one I knit. And then I knit another one. This one's also going in the mail. Um, this is knit out of impe the impeccable yarn that was sent to me. And the color is Pixie Bloom. It is awesome. And I decided that I wanted to knit some more monsters out of it because it was striping up so nice. So then I decided I was going to knit another monster and it didn't work. Um, so I have, where is it? Where is it? I had knit some ears for it, but when I went to knit the monster, it was just coming out all pooling and I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. So I ripped that out and I started this monster, which is Irving the Icebox Monster. It's from the Big Book of Knitted Monsters, which I didn't bring up with me. And here he is. He is very cute. Hi there. Hello. And the only thing I did different is that his eye patch I crocheted. But otherwise, I followed the pattern and then I just embroidered a mouth on him. Hey, y'all. And he's really cute. And this is the Tropical tropical Fruit Impeccables. And this color is Soft Burn. The uh, next thing I started was B, the Basement Monster. And she is out of the Pixie Bloom and Arbor Rose of the Impeccables. And here she is. Da, 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 da. I'm keeping her. I love her. She's so cute. Oh, yeah. So, yes. Be the Basement Monster, Rebecca Danger's Big Book of Knitted Monsters. I've decided I'm going to knit one of every monster in there. Um, at least one. Because some of them are very unloved on Ravelry. They have hardly any projects. So, I am going to knit one of each of them. I don't really care for some of them myself. Um, but I'm going to put them in the gift, my gift box box like box of gifts for when I need a gift or uh, potentially put them on Etsy I'm not sure um so yeah next I knit I knit a monster that didn't work which you'll see in my whips and then I started another monster and this is Geet G-E-E-T the garage monster and he is out of the tropical fruit and the soft burn he's so cute now, this monster has you bind off for the mouth, but because he's variegated, you can't see that. So I decided to just give him a little toothy grin. I love his feet. Heel turn in his feet, considering I don't ever knit heel flaps. But he is cute. They're multiplying. And last but not least, I went stash diving, deep stash. And I found this skein of homespun yarn. I haven't used homespun in years, and in fact, the price tag on this is a clearance sticker from Walmart from 2010. I actually think Kristen picked this up for something um, for herself that she when she was crocheting a little bit, and I was like, "You're not gonna want to crochet with that. It can be very challenging to work with." So this is homespun in the color Ocean, and I have this much left, which is. I think I just weighed it as 57 grams and I'm hoping it's enough for something I want to do with it. 
and I knit um, a pay for a pattern on Ravelry. Ravelry. It's called Briar Bunny. I thought it was fitting to knit it for Easter, and this is very velveteen rabbit for me. He's so cute. I just love him. And he is knit in the round, but then seamed. And seaming, seaming on toys can be challenging. I am very uh, happy with how he turned out. Uh, I, I am extremely critical of myself when I make things like this. The head was not working for me, um, but I love that it's cocked just a little bit. And can you just imagine a little kid carrying him around by his ear or his leg? It's just so cute. So, he's cute down on the mantle. And that is all my whips. I uh, my, my FOs, my finished objects. I do have one whip because I'm still I'm still monogamous for some reason. And this was a finished object, but when I sewed it together it didn't work. This is Charlie the Ceiling Monster. And he is in the book, he is a solid color with striped legs. So I used this as pixie bloom and I knit his body and his arms and then I pulled the yellow, which is really the soft fern, and the pink, which is really the arbor rose, and I knit his feet. And I thought they were just going to look awesome because they're the right colors. And then I sewed them on his body and it looks horrific. Horrific. So, um... Look at how it doesn't look like it matches at all. So I decided I took them off and I'm going to knit another Charlie the Ceiling Monster in Arbor Rose and attach him. And I'm going to knit legs in um, plain Arbor Rose and attach them to him. And then I'll just have two Charlie the Ceiling Monsters. But they looked like knitting them up, like the yarn. Next to the yarn, it looked like it was going to work great. Fail. Epic, epic failure. These don't even look like the same colors. And they are. So, those are my, that's my whip. Um, What do I have planned next? I am in a huge toy mood so I am going to have an acrylic April and I'm going to knit and or crochet as much acrylic yarn from my stash as I can which there's a significant amount I would say I would say at least 50% of my yarn stash is acrylic so shouldn't be hard um, there may be some socks in there too because I always like to be knitting socks even though I haven't been much, much of a sock knitter this year so smoothie um, so those are my plans. And what do I have new? I got an email from the Loopy U that I had some Loopy rewards that were about to expire. And it was, uh, enough to get a skein of yarn from, it's from when I did the Camp Loopy the, over the summer. So I got a skein of yarn and it is some Into the World. And this is Kettle Dye Dresden DK. And this is to knit myself a hat, just like the one that I just finished for Kristen. Um, what was that one called? The Helm. So, love that. And it, this was free! Um, I'm saying um a real lot. I apologize. Starting on Sunday, we are going to be doing Vida vlog every day in April. Or it may be Vada vlog almost every day in April. We shall see. Um, see how life goes. It was fun last year, so it should be fun this year. And last but certainly not least, we have a giveaway. Now, who won last time? Um, Lisa in North Carolina. I have your package sitting on my desk ready to go out. It will be going in the mail tomorrow. Life happened. So be look, be on the lookout for that next week and we have another winner for this one and last week I asked you what is your odd fear and the winner for this I'm going to remember to say it this time is toe creations that's t-o-e creations 
um, if you send me a private message here on YouTube, um, only here on YouTube, with your mailing address, I will get this in the mail to you as soon as possibly can. I promise to tell you guys what my strange, unusual fear is, and mine is a doozy. <laughs> I am terrified, terrified of belly buttons. It, it's just even ridiculous to say it, but terrified of belly buttons. And you may already know this about me because I, I don't know if I shared this on here or not. I feel like I have. But last Memorial Day weekend, Kristen and I did a lot of yard work. We um, landscaped our whole front bank. Our house is set up in a way where we have a bottom lawn and our house is elevated and we have a top lawn and then there's a very steep bank right off of the front of our house and we landscaped that whole thing and I got in there and was just helping out and I woke up on Monday morning, Monday, Tuesday morning and my belly button hurt every time I moved and I was trying to just ignore it because they're disgusting, they, they serve no purpose, they should be removed at birth. Anyway, um, and we feed the big dog separate from Dewey and while the big dogs were in their room that they eat in, I looked in the mirror at my belly button and I almost passed out. <laughs> there was a tick in attached. Oh God, I'm feeling squeamish just even talking about that. There was a tick in my belly button attached. <laughs> this is a real fear and I was relieved to see that well nobody that answered answered this fear but there are a lot of people that have this fear. Not really a lot but there are other people who have this fear. So I composed myself and I said Kristen I think there's a tick in my belly button and she said no <laughs> and I said yes and my foot's asleep and I said what are we gonna do I said you can't take it out so because no one can touch my belly button no one can touch anywhere near my belly button I won't even touch my belly button other than when I have to unfortunately wash it <laughs> Oh my god, I can't believe I'm talking about this. So, uh, I kind of wished we had some, like, Valium in the house at that moment because I then had to, um, <laughs> have the tick removed from my belly button by Kristen. It was awful. It was awful. Thankfully, she got it out really fast. And, yes, but then even worse than that, I had to take said belly button, not belly button, it's take said tick to the doctor's office to have my belly button looked at. <laughs> because Lyme disease is so rampant up here and I had to get put on a course of doxycycline. Oh god, it was awful. It was awful. So anyway, <laughs> I am terrified of belly buttons. I think they're disgusting and they serve no purpose once you're born so they should just be removed and if they do serve a purpose I don't need to know I don't need to know I don't need to know <laughs> oh but reading all of your unusual strange out of the box fears was very reassuring that I am not a weirdo even though I am a weirdo so there is not going to be a giveaway this week, but you never know. Next time there will. I have I have a stash of um, 
prizes that I will be giving away, and you never know when it'll be. So, I would love to still ask you a question. I would love to know what you are doing for Easter slash April, April Fool's Day. Um, you'll see what we're doing. Um, I would also love to know if you have ever pulled an April Fool's prank, a good April Fool's prank, or had one pulled on you. I have never. Um, however, I would love to hear what yours are. When I was in kindergarten, our kindergarten teacher pulled one on us and told us that we had to stay overnight at school. That was not a good thing to tell a kindergarten class. Lots of crying. Lots of crying. Um, but other than that, I've never had an April Fool's prank pulled on me, but I would love to hear if you guys have. And I'd love to know what you're doing for Easter. We, I have a little plan for Easter, and we're going to have dinner. So if you're interested, you can watch Vita and see what we do. Otherwise, I'll tell you about it a little bit, I'm sure. I'm talking really fast, so it's probably time for me to go. I hope you guys are doing well, and until next time, I'll talk to you later. All right? Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.